glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Folks, these things were not put in here to just fill in pages of the Bible. And here's something I want you to understand. God, uh, Jesus didn't say these things to make them true. They were already true. That's the reason Jesus told us about them. It's spiritual law. Now turn, turn there to James, the second chapter. In James chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 21, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. Now notice he said the engrafted word. You know what it means to engraft? You've got to get the Word in you. Receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save your souls. Now your souls, as you will, your mind and your emotion. Now Paul said, Be not conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now he's talking spirit-filled tongue, talking bible toting full gospel businessmen. They were born again, but he said, You better do something about your mind. Renew your mind, because your will, your mind, and your emotion, uh, if you receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Your will and your mind and your emotions may run away with you if you don't get them filled with the Word of God. You engraft the Word of God in there. Jesus said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will. Now, notice what he goes on to say. If any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like a man behold his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You look in the word of God and find out you can have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart, and all the promises of God are yes and amen, and they belong to us. We're sons of God now, not when we get to heaven. We're partakers of the divine nature of God. Then you go out and the circumstances of life hit you in the face and you forget what the Word said. And he says, Whoso looketh into the... He forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work... Notice he called it work. It's work. The doer of the work, when you're doing the Word of God, you're doing the work. The doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Now you have God's Word for it. If you do the Word of God, you'll be blessed in what you do. If any man among you seemeth to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, the devil doesn't have to deceive him, he's deceived himself. Now that's the St. Charles translation. Let's read it again. If any man among you seemeth to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is in vain. What you believe is in vain if you don't bridle your tongue. Because you're going to have what you say. Now it's important to understand that uh, this is spiritual law. That is, he said, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Now why is he called it perfect law of liberty? Because you can't abuse the law of faith. John said in, in 1 John 3, verse 20 and 21, he said, If our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence in Him. And whatsoever we ask of Him, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things which are pleasing in His sight. Whatsoever we ask of Him, if our hearts condemn us not. Now, if your heart condemns you, then you don't have faith to believe for it. But he said, and he goes on to say, if we know that he heareth us, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. I've heard people say, well, I just don't think my prayers got any higher than the ceiling. Hey, they don't have to go that far. Just speak them out of your mouth. God dwells on the inside of you. If the word abides there, he's dwelling there. He said, I'll live in them, walk in them. Get the, get the Word of God in you, and it abides in you. It, it creates an atmosphere fit for God to live in. 
Word is now you. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. Now, the, the problem is that people have been taught that you just can't say it if it's not already that way. But folks, the Bible tells you a very different thing about it. it. Teaches you to call things that are not as though they were until they are. And you remember Paul said, he has chosen things that are not, what? Not manifest. Can't see them, feel them, touch them, taste them. They're not in the natural realm. They exist, but they're in the spirit realm. Then Peter calls it, the, or James calls it the perfect law of liberty. It's a law. It's a perfect law. You can't abuse the law of faith because if your heart condemns you, it won't work. And that, that's, quite frankly, that's why a lot of folks have trouble getting it to work because they're walking in known sin and their heart condemns them and they can't get it to work for them. It shorts it out. So you can't abuse this law of faith. And then you have people that say, well, that doesn't work for me. Oh, yeah, it's working for them. As long as it's not working and they're saying it's not working, it's working. <laughs> Isn't that right? Having exactly what they said. It's as you've believed. Now, see, when science can, science can prove that the observer determines what happened to that neutron rather than the lead plate that goes in there, you know we're on to something that we haven't understood before. But Jesus understood it. He said, as you believe, so be it done unto you. In other words, if you can believe it, based on the authority of the Word of God, you can have it. So the problem is that, that we've got to get this Word on the inside of us. And you, and you do it by confessing the Word of God, saying what God said about it. Now, I had a fellow, you know God has a sense of humor. I had a fellow that wrote me a letter one time. He said, I was out in Kansas. I was going, driving through Kansas, and I was tuning in the radio station, trying to get a Christian radio station. I, I was telling the Lord, Lord, now why hadn't my car sold? I, I put an ad in the paper, and I prayed and believed for, for a buyer, and uh, I want to know why my car hadn't sold. All the time he's trying to tune in the radio station. He said, I got your broadcast, Concepts of Faith, and he said, it just kind of faded in. You know how radio sometimes will fade in, and then you hear a few minutes and it just faded out. And he said, when it come in, I was saying, I can tell you why your car hadn't sold, you hadn't talked to it. You got to talk to it. Call it sold in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, he, he said, if you don't think that'll jerk a slack out of you, you ask God a question and answer it over the radio. And he said, boy, it didn't take me long to start talking to my car. He said, it's sold the next week. One lady said to me, Brother Caps, said, uh, every time I tell these, usually there's somebody comes up and they have another story that they've heard. Said, my neighbor was Catholic and she'd done everything she knew to sell her house. She'd even uh, took a statue of Mary <laughs> and buried it by the sign in the front of her yard. <laughs> and... Uh, it had been up for sale for all uh, oh, several months, and uh, or maybe a year. I don't remember exact time, but anyway, she said, "I gave her your tape series, doing the sayings. Is either doing the sayings of Jesus or calling things or not?" And uh, she listened to those tapes, and she went out there and talked to her house, and it sold the next day. Now. You know, God, like I said, God just show out sometimes when, when people will just decide to do what God says. And uh, now, sometimes it don't work for people that quick because they're, they're steeped in unbelief and they have to confess the Word again. Sometimes people that are not too religious for it, it, it been bombed with unbelief, it don't take them long to get into faith when they hear something from the Word of God. And you know, Catholics, they believe in miracles. But folks, there's some things here that Jesus taught that if we get a hold of it and just, just make a decision to do it, just do what God says. I had uh, my cousin uh, uh, used to go fishing with me. And, and we'd start fishing, uh, driving to the lake, and he'd start saying, he was a negative fellow, he'd say, well, I know you're going to catch a bunch of fish, but I'm not going to catch any. I never do catch any. 
Well, I didn't know anything to do but just agree with him. You know, I'm going to catch him. <laughs> now, here, here's the thing I want to point out to you. If you confess the Word of God, uh, well, let's say it this way. Paul said, taking the, uh, above all, taking the shield of faith. Put on the whole armor of God. And when he talked about that, he said, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked one. How do you take the shield of faith? The shield of faith, I've always thought it was something you held up like a Roman shield, you know, like this. But, but what's going to happen if they come up behind you, you know? And I was praying about it one day and, and confessing the Word, and the Lord said, Now you thought it was a shield you have to hold out in front of you. He said, the, the shield of faith is the Word of God radiating from you. It's an aura. When the Word abides in you, there's an aura. You can't see it, but there's an aura around you that is a shield that the devil can't penetrate. It'll quench all. It is capable of quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now he said, you can build that shield as strong as you want it. But if you get a flaw in that shield, then it's going to let some missiles through. Where there's strife and confusion, there's every evil work. So it, you, you not only got to confess the Word of God, you got to, you got to be doers of the Word of God. I mean, you got to stay out of strife and stay out of known sin and what have you because it, it opens up the shield. And he said, now that shield, you can build it as strong as you want to, but it's the Word of God radiating from you. Now, that shield is like a plexiglass deal that above you and all the way to the ground. Wherever you go, it moves with you. You can walk out in the midst of the curses, and they'll run off of you like water off a duck's back. But if you ever get in a mile of a blessing, it'll stick. The Word of God polarizes you to the blessings of God. See, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. The curses of the law, as you find in Deuteronomy 28, the first 15 verses, 14 verses of 28 chapter is the blessing of the law. We haven't been redeemed from the blessing. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. When you get to the 14th or 15th uh, verse there, it, it says if you don't do his, all of these things, then all these curses will come upon you. Well, we've been redeemed from the curses. But we haven't been redeemed from the blessing. It says all these things, if you'll hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, if you study those words that's used there in Deuteronomy 28, hearken diligently, it means to hear intelligently, declare far, fast, louder and louder what God says. Isn't that interesting? Then Joshua said, don't let the, uh, God said to Joshua, don't let the book of the law depart out of your mouth. You speak those things, they get on the inside of you. Creates an aura around you. But now you take an individual that's speaking the negative things, and well, you know, nothing I do works out. I'll tell you what, nothing ever good comes my way. You can bet on that. He can walk out in the midst of the blessings, and they'll run off of him like water off a duck's back. But if it ever gets close to a curse, it'll stick. It's that negative attitude. It's an aura that uh, taking the shield of faith, you can quench all, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked one. You can take the shield of doubt and quench all the blessings of God. Yeah. It's renewing your mind to the Word of God, saying what God said. Now, there's always somebody that says, well, now, I just believe it this way, Brother Caps. You've got to say it like it is, and if you say anything else, you just lie about it. Well, now, you follow that fellow. The only time he believes that is while he's in church, when he's feeling real religious. Because if he goes home to feed his dog, and he goes out on the back porch, his dog's not there, he'll stand right there on the porch and say, here, pooch, here, pooch. And I'm going to say, why are you lying about your dog? He's not here. But he'll stand right there and call that dog until he comes. But now he thinks you're a nut if you say you're healed when you're sick. Now let's put this in the natural form. If, if, if you go out here and there's a farmer in the springtime, he's planting corn. 
What's he doing? He's calling for what he don't have. Now somebody go out there and say, I know, shame on you, I know why you're planting corn. You just want more corn. Yeah, that's the only way you're going to get it. He's calling for what he don't have. Now, he plants a bushel to the acre. Does he want a bushel to the acre? No, if he did, he'd keep the bushel he had. He's going to plant a bushel to the acre, and he's going to get 200 bushel. Now, he plants that in the ground, and he calls for 200 bushel. No, I mean, he just wants to keep the bushel if he's going to say it like it is. Then somebody said, well, Brother Cap, you just got to say it like it is. I'm going to say this in many ways you'll get it. I bought a farm one time that grew up in Johnson Grass, a certain section of it grew up in Johnson Grass. I mean, it is high. you couldn't hardly see over it on tractor. Now, if it's true that you've got to say it like it is, then you have to sow it like it is because the Word of God is seed. You understand what I'm saying? And when you speak the words, you're sowing the seed. Jesus said he had faith as the seed you would say. That's the way you sow it. Then if it's true in this side, it's true in the natural that you have to sow it the way it is. So if, you cry, if your farm has grown up in Johnson grass, you have to sow Johnson grass. You can't plant corn on it. You have to sow it like it is. Now see, that don't make any sense at all. Now you realize that's the way Jesus taught. The problem has been that in religious circles, the religious world separated the natural from the spiritual. Jesus never did do that. He'd, he'd take the natural things in one hand and show you how spiritual things work. Sow a seed and reap a harvest. No, you plant it the way you want it. You sow it the way you want it. You can have what you sow. How many of you know you can have what you sow? If you know how to raise a garden, you know how to operate in the kingdom of God if you'll just apply those principles. You sow a seed and you reap a harvest. Now, when you plant that seed, that seed has dominion over the soil. Soil never has dominion over the seed. That seed demands of the soil, and the soil has no choice but to produce what you planted. And when you speak a word out of your mouth, you have planted a seed. The heart, the core of your being, has no choice but to search the avenues of God's wisdom to find a way to cause it to come to pass. Now, it doesn't decide whether it's right or wrong. Its job is to find a way to cause it to come to pass. If you don't like the harvest you have, it, check up on seeds you saw. Now, this fellow stand out there and call his dog. Now, if he really believes like he said he believed, Bless God, I believe in saying it like it is. Why didn't he stand there on the back porch and say, the dog is gone, the dog is gone, the dog is gone, oh, the dog is gone. <laughs> would be the doggone truth, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but now let's suppose he goes out there to feed the dog, and the cat's there. Now, if the cat's there, you remember he says, you've got to call it like it is, so if the cat's there, he thinks you've got to call the cats. So he sits down and starts calling the cats. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. And all the neighbor's cats come over the fence. <laughs> now he's got cats crawling on him. Cats licking him in the face. He's still calling the cats. Now some of you have been doing the same thing. I've heard people say, well, I tell you, if we ever save any money, all the kids come down sick and we have to spend every dime on doctor bills. Happen that way every time. Hey, man, the cat's there. Don't call him. Well, I'm just saying it like it is, yeah, and you're going to have what you say. As long as you say what you have, you'll have what you say, and you'll have what you say when you say what you have. Hey, man, you're in a rut. You know, one thing I learned years ago, when you find yourself in a hole, quit digging. <laughs> just don't dig anymore. <laughs> now, this same fella, he goes home, He's left the house shut up, and it's cold in there. Been gone a week or so. He walked right into that thermostat, 40 degrees. He'll turn that thermostat to 74. And I'm going to tap him on the shoulder and say, why are you lying 
about the temperature in this house. It is not 74 degrees in here. What's he doing? He's calling for the thing that is not. Now, if you read uh, Romans chapter 1 where Paul said, the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by things that are made. And just think about the things that are made. Somebody made that thermostat. Somebody made the heart of that unit. And if you can understand how it works, you can understand how the kingdom of God works in you. Because that, that thermostat's a goal setter. Your mouth is the goal setter. What you're saying with your mouth is setting a goal for the heart of this unit, and, and it sends an impulse down here and says, find a way to cause it to come to pass. It'll work day and night to find that way. And you'll be led by your spirit to be in the right place or the wrong place, depending on what you say it. Now, somebody say, oh, I don't believe my spirit will lead you that way. Well, then Jesus was confused because he said the seed has dominion over the soil and what you speak. Now, see, that thermostat on the wall has two things in it. It has a thermometer and it has a thermostat. The thermometer has only one purpose, to tell you how it is, tell you what the problem is. We have a lot of thermometer Christians. They can tell you how it is. And you don't want to ask them most of the time. But we need some thermometer, we need some thermostat Christians. That thermostat can change what is. And if you get your mouth in motion, you can change what is. You call things that are not. Now, if you, if you just take that illustration right there, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by things that are made. Somebody made a copy machine. You take a copy machine and, and, and take that, your Bible and first chapter of First Corinthians, lay it on that thing and punch that button. You don't have to proofread the copy. Why? Because it produces after its kind. Every I will be dotted, every T will be crossed. Now, somebody made that copy machine. The invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made. You take a camera, a, a Polaroid camera, you take that thing and go, it'll go, here comes that little old deal out of there, and you look at it, and nothing on that, throw it away. Oh, yeah, it captured the image. It polarization of light. Put that image right on there. And if you just have a little patience, it'll come right before your eyes. But you see, if you look at it and say, well, ah, there's nothing there, that doesn't work. Polaroid cameras don't work. Oh, yeah, they work. It's a polarization of light. The entrance of the Word brings light. When you get the Word of God in you, it polarizes your spirit to the Word of God. And when you speak those things long enough, it creates that image on the inside of you. It's polarized in your spirit, and you see it. And once you get that image on the inside of you, it will develop in you and lead you to it, just like that Polaroid film will, will give that same image. But you know, if you snap that Polaroid and expose it over here to, uh, to this corner in that dark corner, and then, then start saying, I wonder why I didn't get a picture of these beautiful people here in this seminar. You expose it to the wrong thing. Is that simple enough? You expose it to your spirit to the problem every day, guess what? You're going to have an image of the problem. Word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So you see that that thermostat on the wall can teach you a revelation concerning the realm of the Spirit. Your mouth is the thermostat for your life. You can speak the Word of God or you can speak the words of the devil. It'll produce faith or it'll produce fear. It'll, it'll, it'll cause you to either make bad decisions or good decisions. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. 
But God's Word is incorruptible seed. If you'll sow incorruptible seed, you'll get a harvest every time because it produces after its kind. Hallelujah. Pastor Webb, come here. Now, why did you come up here? <laughs> oh, I called you, huh? Well, you sat there for an hour and didn't come. How come you didn't come while ago? You didn't call? Oh, I didn't call him. You mean tell me you're willing to come any time I called you? Any time. But you didn't come until I called you. That's right. I rest my case. <laughs> I'm holding in my hand a four-tape series called The Power of Confessing the Word of God. Four tapes in this album. It'll be a blessing to you. It's called Offer Number 2401, The Power of Confessing the Word of God. You remember the Apostle Paul said in Romans, the 12th chapter, he said, Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, we, we have to renew our mind to the Word of God sometimes because we live in a negative world, and if you're not careful, you, you get <laughs> to going downstream with the rest of the world and, and become negative. My wife sometimes tells me I need to read my own book sometimes, so we have to all watch what we confess and what we say. This four-tape series were, was done in a live seminar, and it'll help you understand why it's important for you to keep the Word of God in your mouth. I don't care what kind of problems you're facing in life. Don't go to talking problems and talking the situation and circumstance because the Scripture says, faith cometh by hearing. The more you hear yourself say it, the more you'll believe it. The more you believe it, the more you'll say it. The more you say it, the more you'll believe it. <laughs> and it's just a, uh, it's a negative stream that will cause you to talk yourself right into defeat and despair and doubt and unbelief will take over. So you renew your mind with the Word of God. That's what Paul said. Be not conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You do that by saying what God said in His Word, confessing the Word of God. That means to say the same thing God said about you. Don't talk what others happened to others or what happened to you uh, some time ago. Talk what the Word says. Call for that which the Word promises. That's offer number 2401, the power of confessing the Word of God four audio cassettes and an album for $23. It's offer 2401, $23, four audio cassettes. We have a toll-free order line. That's 1-877-396-9400. 1-877-396-9400. And these, I believe these tapes will give you insight in how to tap the promises of God and get them manifest in your life. Until next time, this is Charles Kelch reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. No we are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.